Are there still Beethovens alive today? That is the big question of this episode 41 of Beethoven 250 in 52 posts. And behind that question lies another question. Because if there are still Beethovens alive today, that means that Beethoven should have had children. Or at least a child. A son perhaps. Because somewhere Beethoven writes about a son. Or was it of a child he calls his son or considers his son? Uh, yeah. Well, it is an intriguing story. This might be bad for my viewing ratings, but I'm going to give you a big spoiler immediately. Beethoven didn't have a son. There was a little boy, though, that he considered to be his son, and that was his nephew Karl, born in 1806. Karl was the son of Beethoven's brother Kaspar Anton and his wife Johanna, and Kaspar had been Beethoven's secretary for many years. Kaspar was responsible for all the deals with mu music publishers, and he did that not always in a very decent way. But that was not the reason for Beethoven and Kaspar to quit working together in 1806. No, the reason for that was Kaspar's marriage. His marriage to Johanna Reis. Johanna wasn't greeted particularly hospitable by Beethoven into the family. On the contrary, Beethoven was against the marriage because in his eyes Johanna was of bad reputation. She was accused of theft and was already four months pregnant when she married Kaspar Anton. But what they all couldn't know is that the cause for all the real trouble in their lives was in Johanna's belly. That was the son that would be born, Karl. <laughs> But that wasn't Karl's fault, the nephew's fault, the unborn child's fault. No, in 1812, Beethoven's brother Kaspar becomes seriously ill. And by 1813, the situation becomes so severe that arrangement has to be made in case Kaspar would die. And one of those arrangements is the guardianship over Karl, six years old at the time, and Beethoven gets the sole guardianship appointed by Kaspar over his son. Carl. Now that seems to be the moment where Beethoven's obsession with the little boy starts. Because of Kaspar's declaration that Beethoven would be the sole guardian for Karl, in Beethoven's opinion, Johanna also had no rights over the boy, over her own son. And Beethoven thought very bad about Johanna. She was frivolous, she was reckless, she was irresponsible and was unable to provide a stable financial situation to raise her son Karl. The Queen of the Night is uh, what Beethoven's nickname for Johanna was. <laughs> But by the time Kaspar was dying, Beethoven discovered that all of a sudden Kaspar had written a will in which he split the guardianship. It was divided between Johanna and Beethoven, despite the statement that he had made earlier for Beethoven. Now Beethoven was mad about it, of course, because he wanted to have the sole guardianship and he visited his, bro his brother, forced him to delete the paragraph from the will, which Kaspar actually did. But by the time Beethoven had left the house, Johanna entered the room and forced her husband on her turn to add a codicil to the will that stated that she would have unlimited contact and unlimited permission to be in touch with her own son, Karl, which Kaspar also did. So 
as you can feel right now, by the time he died in 1815, uh, the shit had already pretty much hit the fan. And his death would become the start of an immense struggle between Beethoven and Johanna. <laughs> The death of Caspar Anton in 1815 would be the start of 11 years of legal battling between Beethoven and Johanna. And Beethoven's approach was extremely aggressive. He was very, very rude to Johanna all these years and tried to destroy her reputation all the time. But let's not forget the subject of it all, Karl. A youth like that must be very disturbing. Being in the middle of a fight between a mother to whom you are very attached and a stepfather who is simply a tyrant. Beethoven, as a so-called father, was a tyrant. He sent the boy from private school to private school, um, forbid him to see his own mother, punished him when Karl would visit her. Um, Beethoven really demanded Karl to love him and to be loyal to him. He said which friends to um, see and which friends he wasn't able to have. Um, so yes, living with Beethoven as an adopted son must have been, well, a hell. It's almost as if Beethoven had kidnapped Karl and it drove him crazy. Of course, it drove Karl completely crazy. So much so that in the summer of 1826, he tried to commit suicide. Karl tried to take his own life by shooting himself, but fortunately the attempt failed. In a way though, this traumatic experience had a liberating effect on his life. Because in 1826, Beethoven saw that he could no longer hold on to the guardianship and he gave up on it. Karl, being 20 years old, now finally was set free. You could say that, yes. And uh, he was able to make his own decisions now. He enlisted for the army. And a year later, Beethoven died in 1827 and he left all his fortune to Karl. So Karl in a way, was able to start a new life when Beethoven died, which he did. He stayed in the army until 1832. Um, then he had a job for the Austrian government. He met a nice wife and they had five children, four daughters and a son, whom they called Ludwig. There you have another episode of Beethoven 250 in 52 posts. If you like it, then do really like it by hitting the button below. Donate via Tiki or PayPal if you want to support my series and subscribe to my channels to keep updated about all my videos. That's it for this week. Um, be a little patient. I'll be uh, making a new video for next week. Surely, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. Ciao.